again, based on environment, differ from the traditional school learning environment um, in, uh, in their use of documents and resources. Okay, so um, this was actually, I think, my question, I believe, because I think it was H0 and I had put a question in. Might be, yeah. Um, I, can, I can look it up. Yeah, um, I believe it was mine. Um, and so what I'm doing here, so if you look at this question, so how, um, how, do, how does game-based learning environments differ from traditional learning environments? So I've been specific about, like, so I've not said, how do games deal with documents? Right? But I'm, I'm asking for a direct comparison between the school environment and the, the game-based learning environment. Um, and I've not just said, how do they differ? I've been tried to be more specific and said, in the use of documents and resources, to try and narrow it down so it's easier to answer. Because if I just ask the question, how does game-based learning environments differ from traditional classroom environments, and leave it there, how do they differ? Well, there's lots of ways they differ, right? Um, that might be too open to be able to be answered in a, any reasonable length of time. So I've tried to narrow it down. So, from reading the paper, do you guys, have you got an answer for that? Who wants to answer that? And am I going to go around and, and every time you answer, you don't have to answer the next question? But I'll get an answer out of everybody, because we've got 10, 10 questions. So who's going to answer that, that first one? I will call on people at some point. There, there, there really, all of them say, is there an easy one? Is there an easy one? I don't think we can find it. I want to answer the one I want. Okay. Um, okay, we won't, we, we won't force you to pick like that. Um, so do you think they, di they differ? I mean, the paper suggests they differ. What does the paper say about the difference between the use of documents and resources? Who read this wire paper? Okay. So what, what do you think? Because this is an all, so, so just a quick overview. It's an augmented reality game. Um, uh, it's sort of an, uh, the, uh, an alter, almost alternative reality game where you're looking at water pollution. So, yep. Mm, I think maybe uh, from what I read that more people are active, so more people... Um, Maybe are more interested in learning and actually learn more, and, and they actually learn more about what kind of jobs they can get. Okay, and then, and they learn more about driving and like more practical things in life. So I yeah, actually could you turn the light down a little bit? <laughs> Let me just see it for you. Yep. Um. Yeah, so, so one, they learn, learn different things because they use resources differently. Uh, and what they found is that in normal learning environments, you tend to use the textbook. And the students would tend to use the one book. Whereas when they gave May, I think, made them walk around, made them do jobs, they would access a wider range of resources. All right, so less, less directed. Yep. And, um, and students all had like, different uh, roles. So they had, each uh, one of them had the other ones didn't have, they have to like, yep. Yeah, and so rather than sitting all on the same task. Um, now, and, and how do you guys deal with like, group work and stuff? I know, I know in, my, in my, my students, I make them group work from day one all the time. And we had one international student who arrived who had never done a group project at all. Third year university, only ever done individual projects. Um, so, Working in groups, do you do you like having different roles? Do you like all having the same role? Would you prefer to work individually or in groups? Because this this was a game where like the game was made a group. Would you prefer a single player games or multiplayer games? I think uh, that's a question that might be a bad question because um, it fully depends on the group and the topic. Good pick. <laughs> Excellent analysis. Yeah, that maybe how old the children actually are because younger kids need socialization more than maybe more than adult older children. I, I like the way you went meta, right? Um, so so yeah, so you answered about the question I asked, which was excellent. 
right? Because that's that's showing that you kind of recognize and we can also query the quality of the question, right? So that's, that was good. You have also answered the question as to it, it you answer with it, it depends on the, the level, right? So there, you're, you're saying there isn't a yes, no answer, which I think you're right is basically, is this answerable? Well, not really. It, is it better? Well, it depends, right? Which made it not a very good question in terms of being easily answered, right? So, so it, here, if you're trying to get people to discuss something, Opening questions, great for getting discussion, not great for getting specific answers. Okay, so um, should, oh no, I can read it from here. Um, should games for learning be used in um, conjunction with traditional methods as motivation or replace traditional methods? So, um, what do we think of the quality of this question? It's very specific, so it sits, it sits on the specific end here. Um, it's, it's actually three questions in one, isn't it? <laughs> it, it it's very specific in, in one sense that it says, you know, um, should games be le for learning be used in conjunction with traditional methods as motivation or replace traditional methods? In one sense, you could have a yes no to it. You could say, yes, it should replace, you, it, it should be used in conjunction. You could say, no, it should replace. But I, it, I think it, there is a bit of this. It depends. Yeah. So Tony, you. Yeah, just um, it could be added to the question. I think maybe or should it stay? Or should the game stay outside of the? So it could be like two parts, not only two. It, it, or, it, yeah. It, it does kind of beg the question, right? So, so one, well, it, it, it has a hidden assumption that games should be used yeah, in exactly. education, yeah. right? So this is this is a bit like the the, the question where I asked. Um, so so when did you stop beating your girlfriend? Hmm? <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, so, so yeah, which which assumes some aspect of your relationship, which may or may not be true. But I've made an assumption as part of the question, which is the same going on here. Is should it replace or meet? And you've, you've picked up the, no, no, that, that's a bad question. It's assuming that it should be brought in in any way at all, right? So, so yeah, it, um, it, that's a, a, a something we're begging the question. You already, you've already kind of answered it. You already said, oh, of course games should be used. How should they be used, right? Which is a, as you say, you, that's a different question. You should actually bring in a third part. Of, if games are going to be, you, you, could, you could keep it this way, but say, if games are going to be used in education, should they replace or augment? No, that would be that would remove that assumption out of the question. Um, and so, in general, what do you think of the answer to this question? I think it shouldn't replace the traditional learning method because it's just a version to come the traditional learning method and we need to get this this one this back instead. Yeah, it should augment the traditional learning. With more Interesting. Yeah. Uh, as we talked about, people learn in different ways. So why should everyone learn with games? Yes. Since someone learns better. And also, she was saying and talked about the uh, Hunford uh, how the game side. Then games are probably not so good on the reflection side. So to guide the reflection, you might need someone with experience to lead that discussion in the reflection process, which is what the teacher is supposedly good at. Mm. Mm. So, so if you were, uh, so, so a replacing reflection might be a bad way to do it. But it could certainly replace parts of traditional education. And it could support the reflection process, I think. Yeah, so, so I, uh, that is a question. Uh, so if I ask that question in an exam, um, I, I probably wouldn't ask that question in that way. If I was wanting to get that information out or something about that, I'd probably ask more like, um, what aspects of traditional education can be replaced by games? Right? So I could ask you that kind of question. So what parts could be replaced by games? Right? Which would be more of the, well, 
Okay, if you've got like homework away from the teacher instruction, homework could be done as a game. That would probably work. Um, in class activities, the, the, the action part of the, the, the lesson um, could be done by a simulation, and whereas the teacher gives ref context and reflection. So, yeah, I, I probably wouldn't really ask it as an example. Yep. If you want a more open handed discussion, you might have a question, you would say, uh, uh, discuss different ways in which games can be introduced into school settings. Yeah. And then you could say, okay, you come here, then come there, then you there, might be there. And it allows you to or give. elaboration question that yeah. some students don't like, I hear. <laughs> well, it, I don't think that would be a dislike question because if I'm specific enough to say something like, um, what are the benefits and potential problems of using games in a classroom setting? No, it's a relatively specific question. It allows you to talk about which bits are replaced, which, uh, should you augment, should you replace, should you, like, who benefits from that. So it allows you uh, those kind of open questions. Right? Um, okay, so, um, and in this one, um, in, in Squire is very much on the it, sh it should be used as the motivator, it should augment, but not replace. Right? You, you don't replace it. Just, okay. So, uh, how can games pr um, promote reading in academic domains? How can games promote reading in academic games, uh, uh, domains? So, what do we think of this question? It's a how, to, a how can question. Um, usually in research questions, so if we're doing masters, like when you're doing your masters research, how to questions are really difficult questions to get specific answers to, right? Because all you do it like, how, how can games promote reading in academic domains? Well, how? By being a treat that you give to kids after they've read. The question says nothing about whether that's a good way of using games or a bad way of using games. It just says, how can you do it? Well, I can do it like that. I don't think that's a good way of doing it, but a how-to question, or a, or a how-can question, doesn't ask you what is the best way of doing it, right? So usually, when I see a question like a how can games promote reading and academic, I would, I, I would tend to try and rephrase it as something like, in what, which ways can games be used to promote reading, right? So which is, so rather than a how, it's an in which ways, which asks you to potentially give multiple ways in which it could be used. Uh, if you've got data, you could say, uh, if you're asking a research question, you could say something like, which is the most effective way of using a game to increase reading um, time, time spent reading um, by students? Right? Because promote reading, what does promote reading mean? How do you measure promotion of reading? What's the measurement in this question? Let's say maybe books read or percent of words read. So number of books read. So it, would it be number of books read? Would it be number of words read? Number of words. Read. Number of words. Time spent reading. That or is that on reading speed? That depends on reading speed. So if you juggle the pages, it would be more time spent reading. Yes, it, 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 but it would not. Yeah. So. Yeah. You could, if you made the material much more complex, you could spend much more time reading into your words read. Um, and in academic domains, um, you know, unfortunately, now we study everything. Right? So graphic novels are an academic domain. So are we encouraging students to read comic books? Because, you know, comic books are an academic domain. I can go and show you research papers on that analyze comics and graphic novels in general. Right? So once everything's an academic domain, the word academic domain, unfortunately, doesn't actually mean much anymore. So um, you, you have to put, I, I promote reading. I would say, do you mean they do more of it? Do they like it more? Because right? this is one of the, the, often you see in these questionnaires and when people assess things, they'll actually say, like, not if it changed 
the amount of something you do, but change your attitude towards it. So that was the, there's a, a paper we had last year on, um, I think, recycling, um, where it, it changed this kid's attitudes towards recycling but never measured if your attitude towards recycling affected and you affected your amount you recycled right because we know for education programs on smoking for example um, i can increase your knowledge about the health dangers of smoking without changing your rate of smoking in the slightest right there seems to be no connection between knowledge about smoking and amount people smoke so your attitude towards recycling and the amount of recycling you do, they didn't test if there's any relationship there. So promoting reading could be, oh, we like reading. Don't do any more of it, but I like it. <laughs> Just a comment on that. It is mm -hmm. quite well known in psychology that we don't expect an attitude change to lead to a behavioral change. It's quite the opposite, actually. We rather try to make people change their behavior and then change their attitude later. Yes, exactly. But and so if you and so what you find is in a lot of these the, the, the um, serious game topics, particularly done by computer scientists, I say we're pretty bad at this psychology thing, is that they'll ask attitudinal questions as to prove that they've had a beneficial effect, particularly around games because games are about often used for motivation, and so they'll ask questions about are you do you intend to or what do you think of, and so people will ask this attitudinal question, which doesn't really psych psychologically have much bearing on your behavior. So intention to use is like the, you'll see there's a, a um, technology, the tout, uh, technology acceptance cam is technology acceptance model. Mm -hmm. And tout is the technology usability and acceptance something. Um, but yeah, so there's a there's model for how people accept technology. And some of those are intention to use which may or may not be related to actual using. So I you know, I intend to take the rubbish out every day. Do I take the rubbish out every day or do I? You no, know, I want to, I just. No, you're suggesting you call that kind of question a ego confirmative test. Yes. Yep. You can pat yourself on the shoulder. <laughs> I did it right. I'm a, I'm a good person, I have the right intentions. No, I, I mean, <laughs> if I... Uh... If, if, you, I, if I created something and I want yep. to evaluate it, I can ask you the questions like that to figure out whether I did a good job or not. So I can pat myself on the back that, and say yep. this was a good project. As a researcher, you have had an effect by measuring something you kind of knew you were going to have an effect yeah, on. But it had no, since you measure intention, or you don't measure effect, you measure attention or. Um, you actually measure their ability to answer what they think is the right answer to your question. Yes, yes. You you test the user's intelligence. Can they work out what I'm wanting them to say? Yeah. <laughs> so, because people will do do that, particularly your friends. Um, the best example is your mum, right? Because you can show your mum some of your stuff you've written, and she'll like it. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not me, your mother. Maybe she's a bit. <laughs> maybe she's really hard on you. Um, but no, mums generally will say, oh, that's wonderful um, about stuff you've done. Um, okay, maybe maybe not the games you play. <laughs> what, are you, what the hell are you doing? Um, but yeah, so promote is a tricky question. Um, and I think the answer to this is, well, how can they? Well, by being, by requiring academic reading to solve the puzzles in the game. Right, that's... That's usually the, that's the answer in the, this paper anyway. Anyone else thought of a, how it would promote academic reading? What do you think's been the most significant influence on the amount of literature read by children in the last 10 years? Fun, if it was fun to read. Yeah, Harry Potter. Is there a reason kids are reading, is it? Harry Potter has yeah. a significant effect on the amount of words read by children. Um, and by making reading entertaining and something that was culturally acceptable, you got a lot already across a range of activities, not just that one book. So, so yeah, so you could look at other mediums as well. Okay, so um, 
Ooh, okay, so this is getting slightly longer. We live in a globally connected digital age. Okay, that's a filler start to a question. Okay, but, okay. Uh, and students are more easily bored in school. Stating facts. Um, well, stating an assumption. Uh, how can teachers implement digital devices and games in the curriculum to enhance learning? Okay, there are a bunch of assumptions in that question. Um, the first one is... We live in the global connected digital age and students are more easily bored in school. Okay, so what assumption does that make? That we are more easily bored in school. Do you have any evidence for that? There is some research on attention span, but I'm not sure if that has anything to do with boredom. I would suggest that if you looked at literature of the, 80, of the 1920s and 30s, you would find them saying almost exactly the same thing. Yeah, I would think if you read the schools from Greeks times, they would be the same. They'd be saying, that so the kids same. these days get kids bored days, so easily at school, you know? <laughs> we used to have more attention span because the problem is it's hard to actually measure attention span in the past. <laughs> Right. Uh, this is more uh, issue I have with this kind of question is that that kind of the framing that the paper is about is not the research. The research there is no evidence in the paper that that's not what is studied. That's mm -hmm. kind of say okay we assume this and assume that we go on. So, so this kind of an adopted assumption from the work. So if you ask a question, it might more be uh, what assumptions about school today with the paper and authors make. So, yep. well, that's a good research question. That's a good topic. But it is. So there are there are a lot of these. Um, what I see we easily do is that when if you like the conclusions of the paper, we kind of transfer that into also liking all the assumptions, even though then they are never proven and never no evidence. That's just where you start, and within that frame, we like the conclusions, which means that we also just buy into and accept their their assumptions. Even though they might be totally wrong. So the article is a sales pitch. Not necessarily. But it can be valid, but it's mm -hmm. not proven. That's what the thing. Uh, scientifically, you can't uh, necessarily say it's right or wrong. But they are just saying, okay, please, we assume this is the case, and they might show to some other work and research saying that these, there are indications or even there is proven in the case. But my point is that this paper does not address this issue. Mm. So th th this, this paper doesn't address that issue of. Are kids more likely to be bored, right? So it, they are but, claiming it, or they are yeah. showing there are some work indicating this, but they are not. They are not working on that topic specifically. Yeah, and you can actually improve. You can remove that assumption by you removing the word "more." Why do you need the word "more" in that opening? So we live in the globally connected digital age, and students are easily bored in school. They have always been easily bored in school, right? We don't need to say, we don't need to claim that there's been a change in the environment that requires us to change. We could just say, you know, what we currently do isn't good enough. doesn't matter if it was good enough before or not, because it may not have been. I was just thinking that the, the question asked is really No, you... You mm. pretty much don't need that frame. That framing is, as Marina was saying, that's just framing from the paper that was read. So whether you bring that in or not is kind of independent of the particular question being asked. Yep. Uh, just a bit of pedantic, but it doesn't actually compare, it doesn't explicitly say that there are more easily bored in school compared to earlier times. It could also be more easily bored compared to the rest of the time we spend doing other activities. Ah, more that's easily bored in school. So... Yeah, it's, that's true. It's, it's it, a valid point. It does, it's so, so you're saying they're more easily bored in school than they are in other things. And so that's why school needs to be brought forward. It's a bit of a stretch. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, you know, but that's also, no, you're probably right. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm often coming from the, the situation where people do things like, um, well, they'll say things like violent crime is increasing, so we need to do something about it. And they don't ever... Um, show you data showing violent crime is increasing. And in the US, violent cr youth crime has been decreasing for the last 20 years. 
as a percentage of population. As an absolute number, it's been slowly increasing. But it's because the population's been getting so much bigger. Right? So when people claim, oh, there's a rise in youth violence. No, there is no rise in youth violence in the US. Even though kind of the media suggests it's true. When you actually look at the data, it's not there. So, yeah, um, it's those kind of hidden assumptions. When you ask questions, you've got to watch out for those. Right? Also, you'll see this. When you guys are debating something, someone will come in with a hidden, like, will add an assumption into the start of a question. And if you like, as Rena was saying, if you like the answer and you like the discussion, you kind of just leave that one there as assumed, and it then just becomes true because no one questioned it. Uh, and that's very much of the increasing news violence. It's just assumed to be true with never being questioned to actually ask, show me the data. Right? So, yeah. Again, it, it, it doesn't answer, that, this paper doesn't answer that. It does give you the answer to the part of the question which is relevant, which is um, uh, how, how can teachers implement digital devices and games in the curriculum to enhance learning? That's a perfectly reasonable question. It's kind of how can, and it's a bit open-ended in this sense because you can do it in hundreds of ways. Um, so just, uh, the question, mm -hmm. how can teachers in some time, it doesn't target the whole report at all? No, it doesn't mention, like that framing isn't related to the second part of the question. Right? So in terms of asking a quality question, I think you were right, you could actually drop that whole first bit, still ask the same question, and it would have been fine. Um, so what are the techniques used to make this, and I'll stop so shortly, what are the techniques used to make this study a truly game-based experience which differ from a traditional class, field trip, or excursion? So this question is what makes this basically what makes it a game rather than another type of activity? Yeah, not, not a bad question. I think that asks a reasonable question that you can reasonably answer. Who read the paper and who thinks they can answer that? I think your earlier point, which was you can remember one of your earlier points. Yeah. Oh, sorry, One of your earlier points was that it was different roles. Yeah, okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I asked that question, that's why I thought. Oh, <laughs> oh that was my, my question, okay. Um, I picked on you. Um, so yeah, but, but the role the role playing aspect of it, I think, makes it, I mean, normally you don't have role playing when you go on a normal field trip. Um, usually. I don't know, do, do no, Norwegians? No, do you? no, the teacher goes around pointing at things, or a guide or something. A guide goes around pointing at stuff and you just follow around as yeah. a mess. Yes. You don't get to like, like, I'm going to be a scout and you're going to race ahead and find interesting things and, and I'm going to be an investigator and I'm going to write them down and record them and, and I'm going to be a, a critic and I'm going to assist them. And I think the reason is why is because uh, you end up with one teacher and no students and when they're going back they can't find out very fast. <laughs> they will back over and never interrupt you. <laughs> that would be we actually got the, um, uh, in fourth or fifth grade we actually got our own conferences so we would find a way back. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. They were worried. They're worried that when you went on field trips, they said, "Okay, we're going to get them back." Um, I have considered GPS tagging my son because um, he likes running away. Um, so you can buy the wee dog. That, that you actually, they usually sell them for dogs that you put under the skin and give you a GPS track for your dog. Um, I I don't think a doctor in Norway would allow me. No, no. Suppository. <laughs> a GPS suppository. Yeah, a collar? A collar. A collar might work. Um, but see, I think it would be, because he'll take that off. But it would be better to put it in under the skin somewhere as an actual tracker. But I don't think many doctors will allow me to do that. Um, it's not the part I can do it for you. <laughs> Just put it in his shoe. Yeah, he takes them off. <laughs> and off. When he runs away. Um, <laughs> That's what he did at Barnahaga. He took his shoes and his shirt off and jumped the fence um, and ran away. So, um, yeah, he was. You could give him a mobile phone. He might take the phone with him. <laughs> you know, he likes you playing. Like it. Like yeah, he likes the tablets. But um, yeah, so yeah, so there's there, there is a, a, a um, an interesting field trip 
question there. Um, okay, so we'll do one more and then we'll take the break. Um, ask, uh, so the question five, ask what's lagging behind in technology and do they meet the students' requirements regarding new technology? Where do they not meet? Oh, uh, where do they, sorry. Uh, yes. And do, so are schools lagging behind in technology and do they not meet the students' requirements regarding new technologies? Do you need the word not in there? No, I think you can just say, do they meet? And you're asking the yes or no. Because if you say not meet, you invert what yes and no then mean. <laughs> but yes. And then my favorite question is, so how many schools did you study to get these results? Yeah, yeah. The, did you study any school? The, um, one with did you just go to a local school and say, well, look, they're using shit technology. You look at the Jovic school, there's smartboards everywhere. Right? I mean, we don't have smartphones. Yeah, We're still this, using. This is, this is the assumption for the work. It's not what we did. Yeah. Uh, we were more um, questioning the whole setup on which this research is based. It's not into what they found, yeah. they discovered, what they studied. Because, yeah. like, I, I go and pick my four year, up from, four year old up from Banahaga, right? And they're all sitting around playing on the iPads and stuff, right? And, and down at the school, they're using the smart boards with the smart markers and drawing on the. the projected whiteboard thing and having it stored on the computer and you know as far as tech we're using freaking <laughs> chalk <laughs> and they're and using smartboards <laughs> and this is a completely new building and the academics require chalk because we're academics and we use chalk yeah but in my time we didn't even have projectors uh, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and so when like assumptions again this is a, a are they lagging behind well actually if you study schools Probably not, right? Flagging behind in terms of technology, and certainly not in Norway. Um, uh, is, is and it also, to some extent, talks about games as a technology, and I'm not sure they're a technology. What do you think? Are games a technology or are they a technique? Technique. A dice game is not very technological. Yeah. Although the dice was a, a cool invention, but still. So. Mm -hmm. A, a die was a very cool invention. It was a cool invention about 4,000 years ago? Yeah, 4,000. Yeah, I think it was, it was the, uh, I'm reading this. It was like in the first chapter. Um, yes. It was one of the first games developed, and it was during the Persian War because they had nothing to do and they were starving. So they're like, <laughs> let's do something fun, and they created a whole bunch of games that still exist today. Yeah. Yep, that was the that was the first, or it's the first recorded use of game as a distraction device from social problems. Jane has is a very she's she's a, an interesting woman. Um, Jane McGonagall. It's, it's a good book. Uh, yeah. It also makes a whole bunch of assumptions that she doesn't prove. Right? Yeah. She doesn't actually research some of the things she says in there. She just says them um, right. about modern school education and stuff. But so she hasn't. And it also is very American focused on, on her, her knowledge of schooling and education is around American schooling systems. And so she hasn't kind of done the worldwide surveys that you yeah. might like. But yeah, you know, it's still it's useful to read. But keep, keep, keep it in mind that some of the stuff is not necessarily all fully research backed. Okay. So, but I mean, some of the stuff on early, early, like early games, there's no reason to promote a different opinion. So it usually is actually just standardly accurately assessed. But when you're when you have an agenda you're pushing, sometimes you cherry pick your evidence a bit, and she does a little bit of that. Um, but yeah, um, but no, it's a it's a good book. You, it's yeah, well worth reading. Um, uh, so lagging behind uh, and do the student yeah. So I would say that that's a kind of almost independent question of whether you use games. Um, because I like um, one of our computer science departments in New Zealand, they have computer science unplugged, yep. and they teach they teach their computer science class with no computers, no electronic devices. They do it all with physical items. Yeah, but no? we've had the exams, written exams in programming. <laughs> no, 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 no. On paper? <laughs> yeah, that, 
that's entirely yeah. different. Okay. Um, that's unplugged. <laughs> that's unplugged, but that's unplugged in the real. That, that's that's unplugged in the really nasty way of being unplugged. Right. That's that's unplugged in the way of kind of you know. Um, actually, I can't think of a nice example of that. But it's more like sort of you. Know, what does this music sound like? Right. And you kind of have to look at the the notes and go, okay. Um, I'm, I'm kind of guessing a bit here. Um, or does, does this music sound nice from sheet music? That's a really different job to listening to it and knowing it um, or learning to play by playing it. So, so no, I, I, the unplugged one is, is, is quite different. You don't actually write code on code. You use objects and you teach about sorting algorithms and you teach about data structures with physical things. So you don't actually need a computer to teach some of those ideas. But yeah, it's, it's almost orthogonal, I would say, almost independent of whether or not you use games in education, is whether or not you keep up with technology. One of the later papers that I've had in this course, in the Games for Health, which we're gonna do next week, was one on, on dieting, uh, well, kids' diets. And the thing they found that was most, that like the strongest result was kids really liked the iPhones they were given to do the experiment. <laughs> that was the most motivating thing was the fact that they got an, a, 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 like these 10 year old kids in 2009, I think the study was, 2010, were given an iPhone, right? They didn't have iPhones and now they've got their own personal iPhone. So they spent more time doing other things than doing the diet game. They also had to, I think within the first couple of days, cut off the SMS access to the students because they too expensive. <laughs> they started SMSing each other all the time. The researchers so, had to pay them phone bills. Yes, because <laughs> yeah, the the because the, re, the researchers were using SMS to send messages back from the game, but they found the students had come around the other SMSs and were starting to use that instead. So at that yeah. time, SMSs were very expensive. And SMSs were expensive. So, okay, so um, that would be an orthogonal question. Do we have a good answer to that question? Does, is this answer, the question answered in the paper? I would say it's probably, I, I don't think it's answered in this paper. Right? You, you, could find question, you could probably find research papers that would answer that question or would try and answer that question, but it's not this one. Okay, so... So hopefully in, in your mind now, you've got some ideas about how we ask questions and kind of starting to think, okay, is it very general? Is it very specific? Is it measurable? Is it answerable? Does this paper answer the question that's being asked? Um, where, am, am I, is this an interesting question, right? Because I could ask you things like, what was the first word in the abstract? Is that a good question? Or even what bay do they go to? <laughs> <laughs> yes, what, what's the name of the bay that they use to do the measurement in? Um, I don't know, and it probably shouldn't matter. <laughs> um, so yeah, so they can be very specific and, and measurable and still be bad, right? So I'm not saying that those are necessarily good questions. Okay, so we'll take a 10 minute break, um, and I'll jump this guy who we've been recording it, but I'll have to